Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at how you actually get class 5 armor in this patch because it is totally different to how it was before. I was level 35 and still unable to buy any class 5 front plates from the traders which basically made me want to look into it properly because up until patch 14 you could get the entry level class 5 the Karunt at level 26 from Prapple so this is a huge difference in progression now. Many of these armors are also locked off by quests so if you do actually want certain items you have to target particular quest lines otherwise you might find yourself waiting for level 4 traders to get any like me. Now, with the armor rework, there are three main ways that you can access class 5. Firstly, via the plates directly. Secondly, buying the armors that the plates come in by default from the traders. And thirdly, through crafting. At the moment, you can see exactly which armors come with which plates using the handbook, and the traders only sell armors in this default configuration. This also goes for finding them in raid and crafting them too. If you pick up an armor from a stash, for example, it will come also in this standard config, so we already know which armors come with which plates. So let's start with class 5 plates themselves first, which unlike class 4, can't be found on the flea market and are not eligible for sale. That is, except for side plates. Our first two accessible class 5 armors are the Karund VMC, side and the s sappy 3 plus side both of which are on the fleet as we discussed previously in the various armor videos that i've done so far on the new system side armor only protects the stomach area anyway so it's not that important although obviously nice to have if you can take the small debuffs and the extra weight the s sappy side plates tend to be a little bit more expensive than the current versions because they fit into a wide assortment of carrier rigs versus the current plates that only go into the current itself and the bagari but you can also get the sappy sides at an earlier level from peacekeeper 3 for only 75 dollars each which is a minimum of level 23. the current sides are only 8,000 rubles but you have to wait until prep or 4 to buy these directly at Prapple 3, we do still start to see our first proper class 5 armors, but the first isn't that useful, being the back armor for the Karunt, the Bagari, and the two 6B23 armors. This plate only fits into the rear slot on these four, which obviously is of limited use without a class 5 front plate. However, you can get the Karunt front plate as well at Prapple 3, but this one you need to complete the Lighthouse mission Reconnaissance first, and this plate is compatible with the same four armors. To get to Reconnaissance, you have to complete Punisher Part 2 first, which then opens up easy job part one to plant the marker in the helicopter at the center of lighthouse water treatment. Easy job is quite an ironic name because it's not necessarily the easiest quest to do either to be honest especially for those inexperienced with lighthouse and the rogues. After this reconnaissance requires you to visit the top of each of the main buildings in water treatment. Fortunately you can still die in between each visit so it's not an all-in-one quest but even still you're extremely exposed and it can be tricky to even get in to attempt this one. This route is realistically the earliest you're going to get class 5 and if you do get both of these plates unlocked I'd probably just go with the 6B23-1 carrier as none of these have class 3 soft armor anyway. The only advantage that the Karunt has is the left and right slots for plates and while the Bagari has plate slots too it has no neck protection so the extremely cheap 6B23-1 is probably the best to buy at this stage unless you really value the side armor. A Karund itself will likely be 70k more for the base carrier and then at least 20k for the side armor on top and 90k for a bit of extra stomach protection seems a little bit too much for me. Also do note that the base stats on the 6B23-1 are better than the Karunds as well other than weight. Minus 1% move speed versus minus 5, 1% turn rate versus 2.5 and 2.5% ergo versus 3. After this, Prapple 4 at level 36 is the next accessible plate being the Granite 4 front which is the diamond shaped one that goes into the 6B13, the 6 b 232 and the killer armors as well as the Juk shaped armors being the Juk press, Juk digital and the gazelle. To get this one you have to complete yet another lighthouse quest, energy crisis from mechanic for marking the fuel tanks around the water treatment facility. I'm not 100% sure which quest comes before this because as per the wiki it used to be behind farming part 4 which is the one where you have to find 3 finding raid GPUs but I haven't done that quest this wipe and I have completed energy crisis. So maybe it's farming 3 or it might be one of the signal quests I'm sure someone can point it out in the comments that just got it unlocked. Needless to say, these eastern plates including the granite for front are decent although they're not quite as good as the western sappy plates due to their shape and their chest coverage. Although they are bigger in general they cover more stomach than thorax and they leave a larger gap at the top that can let in some rounds between the plate and the neck hitbox into the thorax leading to quick deaths occasionally that ignore the class 5 plates entirely but I think they're certainly better than using class 4. Speaking of the Sappy Plates, we technically get our first the Sappy 3 Plus on the Traders at Peacekeeper 4 after completing Insomnia. I'm not there yet, but it should be after the Cargo X series of quests and requires 30 kills at night, so it's a pretty lengthy one, although technically only requires level 37 for Peacekeeper 4. However, because of where Insomnia sits in the quest progression, this means it's practically only accessible to players with a much higher level than this. 
These plates fit into the front and back slots of all of the regular Western carriers and have the advantage of being able to swap the back plate to the front in raid if the front plate gets damaged in combat. Gear 4 at level 38 though is a little bit more accessible, with the Cult Locust plates coming available after finishing Peacekeeping Mission. This is relatively straightforward, killing scavs with the Blue Brute UN outfit, but given it comes after Lend Lease 2, this can be a bit RNG to finish as it needs two vertexes found in Raid. The final plate that is directly accessible from the traders is the Granite BR4, which is the same coverage as a Sappy plate despite being an Eastern armor, and arrives on Ragman 4, i.e., level 42, after completing Sales Night, needing seven interchange survives. This quest comes after Dress to Kill and Database 2, so the quests are relatively early and will likely be completed by level 42. The Granite BR4 plate, despite having the same armor shape as the Sappy ones, only fits into a subset of the possible armors, working as a backplate for the Gazelle and the Zhuk, a regular front or back for the Redute M, as well as in the Osprey and the Thor armors as front or back plates as well. However, they won't fit into the Gen 4 for example. Link searching the plate shows you all of the possible combinations, and these ones are a little bit more limited than the regular Sappy versions. There are three more Class 5 plates that are worth a mention, as they aren't purchasable directly. These are the Tallcom Guardian, the GAC3S15M, and the Granite 4 Back. The first two are Western plates that can be found as the default in certain armors that we'll see in a moment, whereas the Granite 4 Back is only found either randomly in raids such as stashes or directly in killer's armor. This makes it a real pain to replace, as the only alternative that you can get is the Class 4 version or the Class 6 one, which is also found in Raid. Although as it's a backplate, it probably matters a little bit less if you're running Class 4 here. As I said, one of the other ways to get these plates is to buy them in the armors directly, and yes, the traders do still stock some of these armors, but it's typically at very high level. The first one that we could get to is at Prapor 4, and this is the Karund VM body armor, the one that we know and love, and this one comes with a front plate, the back plate, and the two side plates as well. The good thing about this is that you don't have to worry about actually purchasing an armor to be able to put them in, but the downside is that obviously you have soft armor on here, which is class 2 on the Karund, which you might not want. You might want something a little bit better with class 3, something like the Juk Digital. Needless to say, as an all-in-one relatively cheap package, this isn't too bad, and this one costs 185,000 rubles from Prapor 4. As we move from level 36 to level 37 and we get Peacekeeper 4, we then open up this barter for the CQC Osprey Plate Carrier Protection. Now this is different to the Assault version and this does have class 3 soft armor as you can see here across the chest and you also get chest, back, sides as well as the arms too which is awesome. We said previously that you couldn't get the Tallcom directly but this is where you find the Tallcom Guardian plates because the Osprey comes with them as well as two sappy sides as well which is quite nice. This guy is for a barter and costs 3 SSDs, so roughly about 130,000 rubles, depending on the price at the time. Now pretty much all of the others are on Ragman level 4, so you're going to have to get to level 42 if you want to buy them as integrated carriers. As I said, the Bagari is not necessarily that worthwhile because you only have class 2 as a soft armor, and you get a Karun front and the Karun back, but no side plates by default, even though it can actually take them. This is reflected in the price, this thing is only 145,000 rubles from Ragman, so it is pretty cheap, but it is quite a heavy rig, so you kind of pay for that, as well as the no neck that I mentioned earlier. The Defender 2 is another one that requires Ragman 4, however there's no quest requirement for this one in particular, and this is another one with class 3 armor, so this is actually alright. This one contains the Granite BR4s, as we said these are sappy style, so this actually isn't too bad. The hitboxes on these are basically the same as the Western armors, so you won't be at a big disadvantage by using this one in particular. This is a barter and costs a sledgehammer, so that's about 140,000 rubles for the armor, but honestly, not too bad. I think this one is okay. The only thing to watch for on this guy is that you only get the throat protection and not the back of the neck, even though it kind of looks like it, you only get protection on the neck from the front. The final one from Ragman 4 that don't require any quests is the Hex Attack Barter, and this one costs 3 rollers, so this one is pretty expensive, probably at about 180k, but this comes with one of my favourite plates, which is this one that we couldn't buy on its own, which is the GAC3S15M. The reason why I think this is so good is that it is so light. This is actually even lighter than the Polymer Class 4 version, which comes over a kilo, and two of these doesn't even add up to 2 kilograms, which is amazing if you're using them in armour. You can use them in the front and back, so you can swap them over, which is good, and basically what I do with the Hex Attack is I I would buy this armor, take out the plates, and then sell the carrier and put it in something else. This is one of those classic ones where you literally just have the front and back plate protected, even by the soft armor as well. And in this case, there is no soft armor whatsoever on the hex attack. So as a very basic, just go and buy a Karasa or something and put those in that, and at least you'll get class two on the side and around the neck. 
Now, the first armor that requires a quest to be completed before we can buy it is the Gen 4 High Mobility Kit. This one used to be completely stuck because you had to complete So It Good 3 first, but Battle State games have changed So It Good so it no longer requires Sobralo armors. The community was crying out for this because Sobralos are borderline impossible to get now until you get to level 42 and do capturing outposts or get to level 50, complete the booze quest and then do the barter because a lot of the old barters have been removed, so most people were locked off from this. However, now the Sobralo has been replaced with a 6B13 in the quest so tons of people have now done so at good part 3 and that allows you to go and do living high is not a crime part 1 which is the quest that unlocks this particular piece of armor. This is the same barter that it was in the past with 6 GP coins and so that costs you about 150,000 rubles which is relatively fair and this comes with the okay cult locust plates. These are 2.5 kilograms so they are pretty heavy but they're class 5 and what you can do and what I've liked to be doing with these things is you just stick one of them in the front and a class 4 in the back and kind of then min max what you've got because if class 5 is a little bit limited to you like it is for me then you want to make your plates go a bit further. The next one is after textiles part one and that's for the gen 4 salt. This is the one that comes with right and left shoulder which is pretty cool and you get the same plates in them. All of the gen 4s come with cult locust plates but the gen 4 salt also comes with the side plates for free as well so that saves you about 20k. There's no barter for this one, it literally just costs you 205,000 rubles. And for what you get, I don't think this is terrible. You get two class 5 plates, you get a carrier, which is worth quite a lot because you have the arms armor as well, and you also have neck too, both front and back, which is really good. After this, once you've completed Charisma Bring Success, you can then get the Fort Redute M. This one comes again with these granite BR4s, the same that we saw in the Defender, and it doesn't come with any side plates, but you can stick these in. If you go and do a link search, you can see which ones that might be, and this is actually the sappy plates that go in the side of the Redute. Interestingly, not the Corund ones. Like the Defender and the Gen 4s, the Redute M is also class 3, so it's pretty decent, and it gives you that neck protection, but unfortunately not the back of the neck. It's only throat and not the back, just like the Defender 2. In terms of the barter cost for the Redute M, because you need two books and four tech manuals. This costs about 180k if you're buying them directly from the flea market, but you can buy manuals on fence for about 5,000 rubles, so that makes this really cheap if you manage to access this barter from Ragman. Then, once you've completed Supervisor, you get access to the Fort Redoute T5. This is exactly the same with BR4 plates, but you get the granite ballistic side plates in this, which are actually level 6, which is quite cool. As we saw, you can actually buy these from the flea market, but they do tend to be pretty expensive, and they're also available on Ragman 4 as well for 16k. So it's nice to get them as part of this preset with the armor. Unfortunately, I think this one probably is too expensive. The barter for this is 3 lions, which ends up making it cost about 500,000 rubles. So you're actually just better off doing something else. And if you do want class 3 coverage across your arms, you're probably better off using a Gen 4 or something like an Osprey instead rather than this, just because it costs way too much for the barter. Finally, we have the Gen 4 Full, interestingly, and this one again comes with Cult Locust Plates and the Class 5 Sappy 3 Plus as well. Now, unfortunately, there is a barter for this on Ragman 4, but nobody seems to know what it is. A lot of people suspect that it is the out of time quest that BSG need to fix because I believe it's not completable at the moment, but even players who are level 60 plus still haven't actually got this one unlocked, so for the moment, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, there are four more armors that are not possible to get on a find in raid only, which are the two goon rigs, the SNS Precision and the Cry CPC, as well as the killer armor as well, which obviously is find in raid and is only on killer himself. These come with the GAC 3S plates, as well as the Tallcom, and Killer, as we spoke previously, comes with the Granite 4 front back, with the back plate being only accessible on him, or potentially in random stashes, you just have to be really lucky. The fourth armour, though, that seems to be finding raid only this wipe is the Gajel. You can find this on Scavs, but it does seem that it's been removed from the traders entirely, at least as far as we can tell so far. This comes by default with a Granite 4 Class 5 front plate and a Granite BR4 back plate because it's sappy style. But because you can't buy this from the traders anymore and you can only find them on scavs, this is the reason why they're so expensive on the flea market. You do have to place these down for one of Ragman's quests and you need two of them. So these things are punchy in price so that makes that quest extra spicy now. So this might leave you wondering where is the Tactech and the AACPC? If they're not finding raid only and they're not purchasable on the traders, well how do we actually get access to these? So these two rigs are now part of crafts within the hideout and the best part about it is that they come with these GAC 3S 15M plates, which I said before, probably my favourite class 5 plate at the moment. In the testing so far, I haven't really seen any evidence that these are any worse or any better, despite the fact that they are the only light armour type class 5 available and they have extremely low weight, so I just think that these are probably the best to use for now until further evidence arrives, just in case they are different in some way. But the way you get access to this craft is you have to complete So It Good Part 4. Yes, another one that was locked behind the Zabralo but is now accessible, and what you need is you need one of these GAC 3S 15M and ballistic plates first. Once you have one, you can do that craft alongside two ripstops and two aramids. With a base time of 8 hours, once it completes, you get a brand new tactic at the other end, and as you can see, you get two of these GAC 3S15 plates. So this is basically plate alchemy. You put one plate in and you get two plates out after 8 hours. 
According to the wiki, you can start the So It Good questline off at level 25, so this can be one of the earliest and cheapest ways of getting class 5 armor by completing all the way through to So It Good Part 4, finding one of these GAC 3S15M plates and using it to make more of them every 8 hours. The Ars Armor CPC is much the same. For this one, you have to complete Living High is Not a Crime Part 2, and when you do, again, you've got these GAC plates in the front and the back. This one takes one GAC plate, one Aramid fabric, and two rip stops, along with a sewing kit, and then that gives you an Ars Armor CPC Mod 1 plate carrier. The crafting time on this one is actually even shorter, with only 6 hours and 51 minutes, and so this allows you to create class 5 plates a little bit quicker. And you also get two side plates as well, these sappy ones that we talked about before, so there's a little sweetener of 20k there too. As I've said previously in my video about armoured rigs and the carriers themselves, I don't recommend using the Ars Armour CPC or the Tactic at all anymore because they just don't cover enough. The soft armour only covers the front plate and the back plate, and that's the same for the Tactic as well, and so you can be shot around the front area and hit in the thorax, whereas something that has soft armour protection at least gives you a little bit of a chance against scabs or buckshot or some terrible 9x18 round, something along those lines. So this only leaves the question of where do you actually get your first GAC 3S15M plate from? The easiest way, I guess, is to ask a friend who's higher level to come and bring you one, or alternatively find one on a PMC who's using it as one of their plates. From the traders, the first barter that you can actually get one in is the Hex Attack, which as we said wasn't quest required, but you do need to get to level 42 to get to Ragman 4 in order to actually do this one. Outside of a friend or killing players with them on, there are potentially a few other options. You could kill AI high level guards and stuff like that, they might have one of those plates inside if they're wearing one of those rigs, or alternatively you could find one in a stash. For me personally, I got given two hex attack rigs out of the moonshine scav case, which is what I was running, and so I had four of these plates already before I was even able to start the craft off, which was very, very useful. So there are a couple of different ways to get it, but yes, if you're locked off from not having one of these GAC plates, then obviously you won't actually be able to start it off in the first place because you need one to get the whole process going. One other way as well is to get to max level fence and try to buy one on the reset, although that is a bit touch and go as well and is full of RNG. The so next up, to go and see which armors you should be putting these plates into, go and check out my armor tier list which explains all of the coverage and exactly which armor is good and which isn't. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.